In today's video, we're gonna be making damage pop-ups in only five minutes. So stick around if you wanna see effects like these in your games. All right, let's start that timer. So we're gonna start out by creating a canvas for our damage text and filling it with the text game object. We'll wanna make sure that the render mode of our canvas is set to world space. Then I'll adjust the transform of my canvas until I have something that looks good. Then I'll go ahead and set up the text game objects transform as well. I'll also set the text value to something placeholder like 100. To avoid having grainy text, I'm gonna give it a font size of 120 and then scale it down to be the size of the character. So I'll go ahead and move the damage text canvas closer to my character game object, and I'll make sure that the color and size of my text pops out. Next, I'll go ahead and create my damage indicator script, and we'll jump into that class. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is set up my variables. So as you can see, I've filled that one out. I've put all my public variables at the top and my private ones at the bottom. So for our damage pop-up, we're gonna wanna make it look at the camera when it's created. So to do this, we'll want to use the transform.lookat method, passing in the transform position minus our camera's position. The next thing we'll do in our start method is find the initial position and target position that our damage text is going to move towards. We'll do this by generating two random floats, the direction and the target distance. We can then use these two values alongside the initial position to calculate the target position of our damage pop-up. So this target position we'll be able to calculate in a short one-line formula. We'll want to grab the initial position, add a quaternion of the random rotation that we've generated along the z-axis, and then also multiply that one by the distance variable we've generated in a vector3 format. So with that out of the way, we can implement the lifetime of our damage pop-ups. We'll want to increment the timer by delta time every frame, and then we'll check if the timer is greater than the lifetime. If it is, we'll want to destroy this game object. Next, we'll move and scale our damage pop-ups. So to do this, we'll want to set the position and scale variables within our transform. We're going to use a vector3 lerp method to lerp from the initial position to the target position. We're going to want to pass our timer in through a sign method to make sure that movement is smooth. So let's go ahead and copy that code to set the local scale as well. We'll want to make sure that we're starting at vector3 0 and vector3 1 being our target there. I just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone for a lot of the positive feedback I've been receiving on some of my videos. It's great to hear that I can actually help some people get better at making games. And let me just shout out Emric. I hope you like being in the video. And let me hit that play button real quick. So one thing we're missing is a way to set the value of the damage text. We'll do this by creating a method, passing in an integer for the damage. To get that one working, we'll set the text equal to the damage casted to a string. So one final thing I want to do to get our damage pop-up looking really good is make it fade out over time in the last half of its lifetime. So I'm going to create a fraction variable. That's just the lifetime divided by two. And we're going to check if the timer is higher than the fraction, we'll start fading out. So we'll grab the text variable and set its color using the color lerp method. We can do this all in line. And I'm going to lerp from the current text color to color clear. We we'll want to make sure that before we divide timer by its lifetime, we'll remove fraction from both sides of the equation. And finally, to fix a small issue, I'm going to set the local scale in my start method to zero. Next, we we'll want to jump into the character class that we worked on in the previous tutorial. And we'll go ahead and add some more logic to the take damage method. Here is where we're going to want to instantiate out our damage pop-up. So I've created a public variable where we can add our damage text in the inspector. And we're going to use this to pass into the instantiate method. And we're going to make sure that we grab the damage indicator component. This way we can call the set damage text method. And there we go. We've got everything done and we can jump back into Unity. We'll want to attach the damage indicator script to the damage text game object in our scene and assign all those variables. Then we'll go ahead and make it a prefab. Finally, I'm going to attach the new prefab we have onto the character script within the scene. Now when we play our game, we should see damage indicators spawning when we deal damage to the player. 
As you probably noticed, the damage pop-ups are really hard to see in the scene next to the character. So what I'm going to do is open up that prefab again and change the scale to make it a lot bigger. This will make it pop out a lot more in the scene when it spawns. I'm also going to change the properties of the minimum and maximum distance. With all that done, we've just finished making our damage pop-ups within 5 minutes. There's a few more things we could do to make it look a little bit better, like change the fonts, maybe add some more colors and some shadow effects to it, but I'll leave that up to you guys to get creative with. As always, there'll be a link in the description down below where you can download all of the project files for free for this tutorial. If you want me to cover a specific tutorial, you can leave a comment in the description down below and I'll see if I can help you out. I've got a playlist on my channel that covers all the fundamentals of making a game in Unity. So if you're a beginner and you're looking to make your first game, you can check that one out over here. here. Alright, well thanks for watching and have a great day.